Pro Group Management. Workers' Comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada Newsmakers on the program today. He's one of my favorite writers and he's an attorney. Aaron Johnson is here for the whole show on an all new Nevada Newsmakers. Hello, is this D&D Roofing? Yes, it is. How may I help you? You did such a great job on my roof. May I speak to the owner? I am an owner. Oh, can I speak to your supervisor? Sure. How may I help you? I love your work. May I speak to the owner? I am an owner. We're all owners. Well, that's why at D&D we work so hard to keep your home safe and sound. Oh, no wonder. D&D Roofing and Sheet Metal. Local, employee-owned, here for you. Retail's impact on Nevada's economy? Enormous. 8,600 businesses, large and small, employing 145,000 workers. And last fiscal year, retail paid tax on nearly $60 billion in sales. We're the Retail Association of Nevada. We support retail, we help it grow, and we mean business. R-A-N-N-V dot org. ProGroup Management specializes in providing industries with the necessary components to satisfy and exceed workers' comp requirements. Every business has unique needs and specific regulations. ProGroup Management stays ahead of the curve, providing up-to-date services to keep your industry in top form. Discover how we simplify your tasks, improve efficiency, and reduce expense to keep you moving in a positive direction. ProGroup Management. Workers' comp that works for you. Truck drivers are some of the hardest working people you'll meet, delivering over 70% of America's freight and 92% of Nevada's. When there's a natural disaster, they're delivering critical supplies to help those communities recover and rebuild. Every sector of the economy and our nation's military rely on truck drivers. So let's take a moment to say thank you. On the open road or city streets, our truck drivers are rolling to make our economy and our nation stronger. Trucking moves America forward. Nevada Newsmakers Studio is located at the headquarters of the Nevada Trucking Association. Motion and purpose are a truck's greatest virtue. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no holds barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, it's always a pleasure to welcome back to the program Aaron Johnson. He's an attorney. Uh, and also a wonderful writer, and uh, I always enjoy that. So please keep doing that, because <laughs> a lot of us enjoy that. Um, you're a former military guy, so I wanted to get your thoughts. We're taping this on the morning of March 14th um, on what's going on in Ukraine at this point. So I'm a Navy guy, so this, that's a lot of ground war and, and is a little outside my expertise. But the, you know, what's more interesting than the kind of tactical picture is certainly the geopolitical one. And not just what's happening now, but how we got here. You know, a good lesson that you know weakness invites aggression, uh, but that a lot of the aggressors turn out to be pretty weak themselves. Uh, and weakness is terrifying. Uh, weakness all around is terrifying, uh, and and that's what we have right now. I, I'm terrified that this is going to turn into conflagration that that wraps up the whole world. That Putin, because I don't think there's any. There's no bridge to retreat across for Putin, and so I'm worried that uh, that he's going to feel like he's got nothing to lose, and employ some uh, some pretty hefty weapons, including nuclear weapons. That that's what keeps me up at night about the Ukraine situation. Well, it was a very interesting uh, op-ed piece in the New York Times that broke uh, early this morning um, from a Chinese business person um, who works negotiating between the Chinese government and Western governments, and um, he felt that China had an important role to play, that, that they had not really played a role at this point, but that there was enough connection between them and the United States, them and NATO, and them and Ukraine and Russia um, to actually be an important player in this. And it'll be interesting to see how that develops. Well, if you're counting on China to do the right thing, I mean, you were talking about a country that exists on the same moral plane as Nazi Germany. I mean, they put people in concentration camps. They murder political prisoners. 
their communist regime uh, and, and their murderers and their evil. I mean, that, that, that's what it is. Uh, and so the bottom line is that China cares about China. And really, the Chinese government cares about the, the members of the Chinese government. That's it. They don't care about even the Chinese people. China is perfectly happy to see the West and, the, and Russia itself tear each other down into the ground and be the last man standing. And so I think that anything that we rely on China for is a huge mistake. Uh, in, in terms of keeping a peace, because they're just as happy to stir it up. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not suggesting that, that China is uh, anything, you know, apart from what you described it as, uh, but their Belt and Road Initiative um, covers a huge portion of the globe. They own a huge amount of United States debt. Um, they have a relationship with Russia uh, in terms of trade, the same with the Ukraine, the same with NATO. Um, so I think they do have interests um, even though they can be in so many ways as evil as you describe them, um, they also have other interests. And I, I you know, it'll, I, I'm just saying, the, I'm the raising the issue. No, People sure. can go to the New York Times today, go to their website. You can read the, uh, the, the uh, commentary for yourselves. And, and s the, the points raised were interesting. The, the question really is, is almost more cultural, is that, you know, you, you can have peace if in, in a totalitarian country where nobody's free but that's kind of the piece of the grave and that's not the same thing. And so uh, China is, is essentially colonizing Africa and, and doing a lot of these things and, and that's where their interests lie. Our interests should always be to promote freedom abroad uh, it, because that also promotes prosperity. Uh, and that's kind of what we're seeing. One, one, of the, one of the silver linings of the Ukraine situation is waking us up to remember remember who we should be and who we are. Uh, there was some poll that came out that said a majority of Democrats would flee the country if somebody invaded the United States, which is just head-shakingly shameful. Uh, whereas, you know, the, this small country that everyone would expect to be overwhelmed in a week is standing and fighting and sticking up for themselves and showing what, although they have issues, what a, what a free people, uh, when citizens have weapons, can do to defend themselves and stand up for themselves, and that's inspiring. I, I think it's been the most remarkable last two weeks that uh, I can recall. Let's take a break. We'll come back when we'll bring it home to Nevada after this timeout. Hey guys, are you watching the game at a friend's or the bar again because you can't watch at home with your wife? Or worse, because she kicked you out and kept your couch, your flat screen, and your kids? What's the one thing a man needs when he loses a good woman? A good lawyer. And when he loses a bad woman, he needs a great lawyer. What makes a good woman a bad woman? You tell me. You're the one that can't watch the game in your own home. I'm men's rights attorney Marilyn York. And I represent men in divorce, custody, and family law matters. Because of UMC, there's a wide open road ahead of me. Because of UMC, she can grow up with her twin sister. Because of UMC, I'm here to help you. UMC, the highest level of care in Nevada. The signs and symptoms of cataracts can start out small with subtle changes in your vision. So don't wait. Be proactive and take your vision into your own hands. If you're experiencing the onset of cataracts or just have questions, contact your eye care professional or call Eye Care Associates of Nevada today. Dr. Hiss has years of experience specializing in the surgical correction of eye disorders and has completed over 84,000 vision correcting procedures. At Eye Care Associates of Nevada, we'll change the way you look at the world. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development, building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com. Tollsdevelopment.com. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Oren Johnson. He is an attorney and, uh, and a great writer. Um, one of the reasons I thought of you to bring you back onto the program um, was the recent ruling by District Court Judge uh, James Wilson in Carson City uh, uh, regarding the initiative petitions um, that the uh, Clark County Teachers Association put on the ballot, uh, one to raise uh, um, a sales tax, the other to raise the gaming tax, um, in an effort to get the legislature uh, to put more money towards education. 
mining came up with money and then the Teachers Association said they wanted to withdraw those initiative petitions. Secretary of State Barbara Sagafsky said, you can't do that. The judge said, yes, you can. Um, this presents a whole potpourri of potential problems because it seems like now you can, if you can get an initiative petition onto the ballot, you can hold a gun to anybody's head whether you want to actually pull the trigger or not. Well, the interesting thing is that up until this last legislative session, Secretary Skowski was right. The statute that permitted the withdrawal didn't exist. That was part of the deal that got worked out behind the scenes the last minute in the legislature after 200,000 people had signed off on this petition uh, that apparently the teachers union didn't want in the first place. I mean, this is just all dirty pool and machinations. And it was pretty gross, quite frankly. Uh, the, the, what was interesting, because I read Judge Wilson's order, uh, and he did not note in that order the recent provenance of the new statute. And so what Secretary Skowski said was that, look, at the time that the initiative was submitted, they were not permitted to withdraw it. Uh, the judge said there was no, you know, he didn't mention it, but essentially there's no time on it. The statute says you can withdraw it, so you can withdraw it. But that was part of the, that was part of the backroom deals at the end of the legislature is that, well, we'll give you some money from, from mining. Uh, we don't have to make hard choices, you know, in terms of sales tax, which really would have hit people in the pocket when inflation is going insane. Uh, and then the teachers union doesn't have to be uh, the bad guy, even though they kind of are, quite frankly. Uh, and, and so that's where that is. So it was, it was kind of some weird slate of hands. I mean, I, I don't know that I disagree with Judge Wilson's order, legally speaking, um, but how it got to that point was maybe not, maybe a little sausage makey. All right, but, but the ramifications though, am I not correct, are pretty ugly? Oh yeah, well, I mean, the, you know, that's always true. Um, I, I, the problem with initiatives and, and that sort of thing always is that you don't have the committee hearings, you don't have, you know, people aren't reading the text of the statute, there, there's all those types of things. Uh, and so they're better for kind of binary questions. It's kind of like when we legalized marijuana and there's a lot of stuff in there people didn't you know, fully understand about what they were, what they were actually legalizing. Um, and so, you know, the, I, I'm, I'm always a little bit skeptical of that, but yeah, no, it just, it, it adds another tool to pit different interest groups against each other uh, and to, as you say, hold a gun to the head of the legislatures. But that's, you know, the legislators frankly need to step up a little bit and be brave. Uh, and call that out when they see it. Um, do you have concerns of who's next? Because, <laughs> because it's, it, you know, it, it seems to me that you know, the, the big thing with initiative petitions is having the money um, to hire the people to get the signatures. If you've got the money to be able to do that, uh, you can now pretty much do anything you want. Yeah, no, that's true. Uh, you can, you, you know, I hate to say the word it. blackmail, but. I, I, I don't even know it's, blackmail, all that, it, you know, I, I'll, I'll tell you this, it, any worries that I have about abusing the initiative process, and certainly this I think was an abuse of the initiative process, are, are dwarfed by the, you know, any cure of, you know, getting rid of the initiative uh, petition, it, that sort of thing. I, I would rather have people have access to an imperfect system to bypass the legislature than to kill it because we let the perfect be the enemy of the good, if that makes sense. Okay, but do, you know, over the years, some of the people I most respect uh, discussing politics uh, have said that the initiative petition um, system is the worst way to govern. Would you agree with that? Yes, I, I agree. I like it as I, I like it as an escape valve uh, it, it, in some ways. I, I, I don't mind outside pressure being being brought on politicians, even though even when we can point to individual instances like this one where it was shady and, and you know, we don't like it and, and the way it kind of worked out was gross. But the bottom line is that I like there, there being an outside way to bypass the legislature, although I think it needs to be used sparingly. And I agree that on balance, that's not the best way to govern. Um, it was interesting that uh, the governor last week um, said that uh, A, he's not gonna raise taxes uh, if reelected, um, but his number one priority is education. It just seems we keep funneling more and more and more, and yet we look at the results, in particular in Clark County, and... Well, that's because it, it, people think it's just this two-dimensional thing, we raise money, we get better education outcomes. It's just not true. I mean, the, the bottom line is that you have to empower schools. My kids go to a charter school. 
uh, a couple years before COVID, when the last time they did those rankings, it, it, was, it was still a new school. It was the third best school in the whole state. Uh, and it's a phenomenal school, we love it. But the reason why is because the individual principal, the individual teachers are empowered beyond the bureaucracy. Uh, and so that's where it is. And so, the, the, so w when you look at, w you, you over-bureaucratize the whole education system. There was a statute passed, and I missed, I missed this, but I, I read about it recently, uh, that changed when kindergartners are allowed to start school. And it made it harder for, uh, for kids. You had, if, if you're not five years old, you gotta wait a whole year. Well, my daughter was born in November. She had to start kindergarten kind of late because of where the statute already was. She was so bored that she was crying she'd come home. I mean, she was already reading. She was already doing all this stuff. Thank God we went to a charter school where parents have input, uh, where one size doesn't fit all, uh, and we can actually teach the kids that are actually there instead of you know numbers on paper, which is all they see in the legislature and all Governor Sisolak seems to see. And that will improve education outcomes far beyond just funneling more money and funneling more money. Um, it, it's, it's really interesting to, uh, uh, to look at this whole education system and, and, you know, every time you talk to somebody from the teachers union, no matter what year it is, how much more money do you need? It's a billion dollars. Right. I mean, that's, that's the solid gold number. The, the number one thing we could do for our kids is get rid of the teachers unions. They, they, they have, there's nothing about what the teachers unions do that actually benefit our kids. And I don't know how many decades we're gonna let them steer the ship. And especially through COVID where they just, just no, we don't wanna go back to work, don't wanna go back to work, don't wanna go back to work. And the harm done to the kids w with that should forever destroy any credibility that they ever have when it comes to talking about uh, how we educate our children, how we set them up for success in the future. In a previous interview that we did today, um, Assemblywoman Lisa Krasner was talking about election integrity as being the number one issue. Um, to me, I think that uh, potentially the number one issue in this election cycle is going to be um, the effect of COVID on students. Um, how many problems that they had during COVID uh, beyond you know, depression and all these other, you know, uh, physical problems, uh, but missing proms, missing sports, um, missing a chunk of their childhood. I think that's gonna play, it's not necessarily a Republican or a Democratic thing. Oh, I yeah. think that that's gonna be, maybe it, it, inflation's, you know, gonna be up there. But those are the two big issues to me. The, the, the only reason I might disagree with you, because I think, I think, yes, it'll be a huge issue, and it should be a huge issue, just like it was in Virginia uh, when Governor Youngkin won, is that I, I don't see that messaging coming from the Republican uh, candidates, and drives me a little crazy. Individual parental rights saying, you know, parents, you need to be the ones making decisions for your kids when exactly the opposite has happened. And now we've seen what happens when we turn it all over to bureaucrats who frankly don't know what they're doing. Uh, it's terribly, terribly destructive. And that's the winning message. Um, the other side of that coin, though, is that both parties are split. You have a left and a right in the left and the right. Um, this is a pretty unique situation. We're, we're seeing fundamental realignments about, you know, these kind of cloistered, you know, I, I kind of hate the word elites, but that's, I, I don't know, a better one, you know, where, where they, uh, you know, have been in power for a long time and have a lot of money and then just get, just regular people working. And I think we're seeing a major realignment between, and, and people, just regular working people uh, who want their own lives back and, and resent being told what to do by people who are incompetent at telling them what to do, uh, really kind of rising up. Uh, Republicans are capitalizing on that uh, to a greater extent than Democrats. Uh, but Republicans better, better respect it uh, and it better not be lip service. And again, I, I'm, I'm nervous that there's not being enough, especially from kind of the more leading candidates. I, I wanna see some more, frankly, fervent campaigning on exactly that issue. It's all about individual liberty. It's not left or right, it's up or down. It's individual liberty versus, uh, you know, all being subject to the bureaucracy. All right, but I mean, another side of that though, is that you have people like Tick Segebloom and Dina Titus being accused of not being liberal enough. I mean, that's unbelievable. No, I know. Well, I, you know, I've always liked Tick. Uh, I disagree with him on most things, but, but I've always He's liked him. He's a very likable person. But he also, uh, you know, he also has some common sense to, to him. And at the end of the day, uh, I don't care where you perceive yourself on this two-dimensional spectrum. It, you see bureaucrats screwing it up and letting us down for the last two years. At some point, you say, okay, enough of that nonsense. Uh, I know how to run my own life. You know how to run your own life. It's not going to be the same for everybody. 
uh, we need to get back to a sense of freedom. In this country. Okay, so do you believe the numbers that we're seeing of nonpartisans versus Republicans and Democrats, or or do you think that those nonpartisan numbers are skewered, and that those actually are Republicans and Democrats that are coming into that label? So all nonpartisans tend to lean one way or another. Um, nonpartisans are not the same as 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 moderates in the middle who who go one side or the other. Uh, a lot of times, in fact, the nonpartisans tend to be kind of extreme one way or another uh, because they, but they, they don't think the Republicans are conservative enough, or they don't think the, uh, you know, Democrats are liberal enough, or that, that sort of thing. And so, so, it, and it, I know it gives pollsters and political scientists fits to try to classify those people and that sort of thing. And part of it, obviously, is you know, you, you get default to nonpartisan, you just go get a driver's license, whether or not you want to register to vote. But the bottom line is, I think there are a lot of people who are increasingly just turned off by everything else. Uh, don't appreciate though that you know now they've essentially silenced themselves in the in the, the primary election. Uh, but that's part of that realignment as well. A lot of people are really rethinking uh, previous kind of tribal loyalties. And while that's going to be messy, I think that's a very good thing at the end of the day. And I would agree with you. Let's take another break. We'll be right back. Seven at seven is available anytime, anywhere. I'm Riley Smith with your Vegas Golden Knights. Watch seven minutes of nonstop news from the Las Vegas Review Journal. Streaming on LVRJ. Modern boutique Ahern Hotel and Events Center in Las Vegas. Host meetings and events on two floors. Stay in luxurious rooms and suites. Unlimited branding opportunities. Regional Italian cuisine by Chef Mark Segrisi. Flexible event spaces. Full buyout options. Visit ahernhotel.com today. I'm Jeff Gehrman, an investigative reporter with the Las Vegas Review Journal. I'm your guide for season two of Mobbed Up, The Fight for Las Vegas. You're in with every gangster and hoodlum in the United States. I don't go for that, Mr. Kennedy. Well, I don't go for that kind of action. I was on television accused of fronting for the mob. Subscribe to Mobbed Up, The Fight for Las Vegas, Season 2, today on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. What do you count on? You count on your power every day. At NV Energy, we've always powered what's important to you. But we're not looking at the past. We're focused on the future. While our standards are high, our rates will remain low. And our commitment to renewables isn't just meeting standards, but leading the way. Because you can count on more than just your power. You can count on the company who brings it to you. That's our promise. You can count on it. 7 at 7 is available anytime, anywhere. I'm Riley Smith with your Vegas Golden Knights. Watch seven minutes of nonstop news from the Las Vegas Review Journal. Streaming on LVRJ.com and YouTube. Powered by the Las Vegas Review Journal. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with the attorney, Aaron Johnson. Um, so I, I, I had this thought, um, and I'm curious to see what your, your opinion of it is. Um, you know, for a long time, libertarians uh, would run, but they would never win. And when they joined the Republican Party, all of a sudden, they actually started getting elected to office as Republicans. Um, back in the day, uh, people like Harry Reid and Richard Bryan were considered, in quotes, conservative Democrats. Um, blue dog Democrats was another phrase. Um, do you think in deep blue parts of Nevada that there are some Republicans that might want to consider running as conservative Democrats. Um, you've got people like Jim Gibson, um, who would be a good example of somebody that in another place in time would probably be you know, a Republican, uh, but has been a very successful politician as a Democrat, as was his father. So, I mean, there's people that I think will go down that road. Um, you know, I used to think that the, the system was a little bit more self-correcting than I think it was. One, one of the things that kind of speaks to what you just said is the just atrocious redistricting that was done. Uh, you know, people, th there were a lot of navel-gazing op-eds talking about the guy that yelled at the governor in the, in the restaurant. I, and that guy's a jerk, that, that's fine. But uh, a lot of the, you know, you'd see these opinion pieces talking about this, yeah, this is the harbinger of doom for democracy or this, just, which is insane to me. The real doom for democracy and the real doom for that kind of moderation under pressure from voters is the fact that the vast majority now of our legislative seats are not competitive. 
politicians can do whatever they want when they're not competitive and they'll never face the pressure from voters. And there's enough tribal voters, especially in primaries, uh, that they'll never be held to account. And so the fact of the matter is that the, when, when, the, when Judge Estes signed off on the, uh, on the redistricting, uh, and they say, hey, it's purely a political question, this comes from the US Supreme Court as well, what a shame. Because every single district that's not competitive means that those votes don't matter. And the majority of Nevadans votes for their legislative representative don't matter. That's awful to me. It's stomach churning to me. And that's what will prevent what you're hoping to see. Uh, although certainly there'll be some people that kind of take advantage of that and try to kind of, you know, steer it right and left. Uh, the only thing, you know, we'll see how big this, this wave election is uh, and whether or not it, it, it upends it. And the other thing is, is that the Hispanic vote nationally uh, trending towards Republicans, I think, will also upend a lot of those presumptions and a lot of those numbers. You know, as bad as the gerrymandering really is, uh, it, it never stays that stable uh, for the party in power as they think it did uh, for long. You know, uh, and I agree. Um, and here in the Western United States, um, I think that the Hispanic power is only be beginning to be shown. And I think that's going to be a huge issue going down the road, you know, Good, bad, whatever. But we'll just see if we'll just see if Republican candidates and the Republican Party, which is totally inept in this state, can take advantage of that and can speak to those folks like they need to speak to those folks. Well, it's a natural base. Yeah, I mean, 100%. you know, conservative, religious, family oriented, business people. I mean, well, and they're just people. Just talk to them like individuals. They're entrepreneurs. That, that because because they are individuals. I it, stop feeding in this narrative that we need to look at everybody as a demographic group. You are so right, sir. And that's why I love having you come on the program. <laughs> Pleasure to have you back. Come back soon. Always enjoy it. Thanks, Al. Thank you. And we'll be right back. Brian Culpa Photography was born in the rolling hills of Massachusetts. And now he can help you experience the stunning beauty of Nevada in a whole new way through the power of flight. Flying has always been a passion for Brian. And at Brian Culpa Photography, he can make your imagination soar. Brian has the creative mind and tools to tell your unique story. Experience the bird's eye view at brianculpaphotography.com. Each day, the Children's Advocacy Alliance partners with leaders, legislators, and families across Nevada to improve children's health, education, economic well-being, and safety. We recognize Nevada will be no better than the state of its children. Be a part of this change. Be a supporter of the Children's Advocacy Alliance. For more information, go to caanv.org. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development, building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com. Tollsdevelopment.com. Take a look at Pro Group Management and see how your workers' comp requirements can be met head on. By taking a proactive approach, Pro Group can assure that your company is meeting or exceeding state and federal standards. As you move forward in your industry, Pro Group moves with you, simplifying regulatory tasks, clearing the way so you can get the job done and look to your future success. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. You can now watch Nevada Newsmakers on YouTube. Subscribe to our Nevada Newsmakers channel. We'll see you on the next broadcast.